Hello friends and welcome to the next tutorial in the Prince Armory Academy. Today I'll be demonstrating how to make upper leg armor for the Imperial Knight series, including the knees and creases as we near the completion of the full suit of armor. As always, feel free to watch along and pick up some great leatherworking tips. And if you'd like to craft this project yourself, head over to the Prince Armory Academy and pick up the pattern, or grab the complete bundle at a great discount. Just a reminder before you start crafting, all of our patterns can be scaled to fit, so double check the size using a paper printout first. Our first crafting step is to cut out the pieces. This can be done by hand using your preference of blade or shears. If you would like more instructions for cutting leather by hand, I suggest checking out some of the early fantasy series tutorials like the helmet. Alternatively, one of the perks of the Imperial Knight series is that it can also be cut using a laser. The files are pre-arranged for a desktop size laser cutter, so my first step is to prepare some blanks. The leather I am using here is 10 ounce vegetable tan leather provided by Weaver Leather. And after marking the dimensions to the leather, I use a razor to quickly slice out the blanks. Then I load them into the bed of the laser. I've been using a Glowforge for this series and I've really enjoyed it. It definitely saves a lot of time and eliminates a lot of tedious steps. For example, with armor making especially, I have to cut out a lot of small intricate parts for things like gauntlets, and so many repetitive tasks like cutting buckle straps as seen here. And having a laser not only saves time by doing the cutting, it also lets me offer a much more visually interesting design for nearly the same amount of effort too. For armor buckle straps, I like to use anywhere from 4 to 7 ounces by the way. If you are interested in purchasing a Glowforge yourself, I have an affiliate code where you can save up to $500. Just use our code during checkout. It is an investment of course, but it can pay for itself very quickly. I'm still learning the Glowforge myself and putting it through its paces and testing different settings for each project. I do plan on offering a recap video with extra tips whenever I'm finished with this series. If you set the speed a little too fast, as I did here, there may be times where you have to trim out some of the sections. Most of the work is done for you, so it's generally quick work with an X-Acto knife to finish the job. After your pieces are separated, you have to decide how or if you want to decorate them. In past videos and many to come, I've demonstrated many techniques from simple to advanced that you can leverage in the creation of any project you make. I always recommend you at least bevel your edges and at least consider doing some basic tooling or augmenting your designs. Leather is an incredible and versatile medium, and not cheap either, so it's great to utilize some of that potential. If you've followed Prince Armory custom projects in the past, these may not be new to you, but here are a few examples of what we've done with leather along the way. But for this project, however, I'm going for a more minimalist design so you can see how it looks at a base level. What you do with it from there is up to you. Be sure to check out our other tutorials to learn more about how to tool, dye, and embellish your projects. The options are endless, but we'll be going pretty fast over the next steps for this video and skipping straight to the dye process. I'll be using Phoebing's Royal Blue Pro Oil Dye and Black Pro Oil Dye here. In the spirit of efficiency, we will be using an immersion dyeing technique, or simply dip dye if you prefer. This is a good way to quickly dye the pieces with results that are fairly consistent and uniform. I'll dip each piece, then set it aside to dry. I'll give a quick fold to each knee piece as an optional visual preference. There is a trade-off with extra dye consumption using this method, but it can be worth it in time savings. But I do have to point out there are times where it can make a bit of a mess. It seems my thumb has been sacrificed for the cause of requesting you to leave a thumbs up for the video. Don't let my noble sacrifice go in vain. For the finish I'll be using Tough Cut, which is an acrylic product from Weaver, and using the same technique here as dip dyeing. This process is a great way to get some extra hardness for your armor pieces too, as the acrylic seeps into the leather and binds the fibers. It is a pretty quick process too, but you do have to spend some extra time managing the finish as it dries though, so it doesn't streak or pool. When the pieces are dry enough to continue, I'll be preparing the buckle straps first so they are ready when needed.
Then I'll move on to assembling the upper portion of the leg known as the cuisses. There is a particular direction and flow to the design, so I do suggest that you null out all of your parts first before committing any rivets. I'm using medium double capped rivets when going through two layers, and long rivets when going through three. You can go one rivet at a time, or pre-assemble the pieces and then set them all at once. Safe to assemble the cuisses completely flat and then bend the curve after. The straps are long so you have plenty of adjustability. In most cases you will be able to attach the straps along the edges as shown here, but you will want to double check the fit first and you'll want to mark the placement for the strap locations according to fit. To assemble the knee cop, I am starting by riveting the overlapping section together and attaching the buckle end of the strap at the second rivet hole. Then continue riveting up the side. It will become increasingly difficult to access the rivets deeper into the shape, but you can always set the rivets flat from the inside when necessary. Then I will attach the long strap in, feeding it through the slot, and then adding the overlay trim piece as shown. In hindsight, I would actually suggest performing this step first before closing the side, so it is easier to set while everything is still flat. The 
will connect the cuisses and the greaves to the knee. They may look the same, but notice that they are two slightly different sizes. Using Chicago screws, start with the knee cop and attach the larger of the lames first to the top and the bottom of each knee section. smaller lames will attach beneath the wider ones. Then you can connect the knee assembly to the cuisses. The correct orientation is to have the side fin of the knee facing the outside of the body and to have the taller portion of the cuisses also on the outside of the body. Some of the tools and materials in this video were provided by Weaver Leather Supply. Weaver has been a primary go-to source for my personal leather tools and hardware needs for many years, and I appreciate their support in this content. I will link some of the supplies used in this video below, but be sure to check out their complete catalog packed full of hardware, leather, and all sorts of leather crafting tools and supplies. Using these affiliate links will also support us in the creation of more tutorials, so everyone wins. Then we can finish the assembly by attaching them to the greaves which we created in the previous tutorial. The ideal orientation of the greaves is to have the opening section with the straps on the inside of the leg which makes it easier to equip by yourself. Also, a warm thanks to our patrons for their continued support of this content. There are some great perks for joining too, so if you've ever wanted to see what's going on behind the scenes or wanted early access to content, or even some pattern drops, take a look and see if you'd like to join us there. You can also join us now on YouTube as well for upcoming behind the scenes and bonus content. Quick note on the greaves though, if you have an early version of this pattern, the whole placement at the tops of the greaves should be spaced out just a little bit wider so that the lames connect more tightly against the greave. So if you don't like the wider gap, just punch a new hole to either side. I'll also be updating the pattern with the correct placement. So thank you for joining us in this tutorial. If you enjoyed it, I hope you'll like and share the video. And there's many more tutorials coming soon, so be sure to subscribe to the channel and get notified for the next drops. Up next, we'll be crafting the arms, the gauntlets, and the female breastplate. Don't forget to leave a thumbs up on this video.